Hello. Well, all our guests on the series so far have had their lives altered in some profound way by their particular revelation. But for none of them has the change been quite so dramatic as it has been for our guest tonight. As a pop superstar on both sides of the Atlantic, Cat Stevens enjoyed a lifestyle envied by millions. He first made it in 1966 when his song, I Love My Dog, went into the charts. But the success of that and his next even bigger hit, Matthew and Son, was cut short when in 1968 he was struck down by tuberculosis. After a year's convalescence, he came back with a string of new and very different hit songs. Well, that song and a number of others that followed signaled to those who were interested that Cat Stevens was a man in search of something spiritual. By the mid-70s, having flirted with astrology and Buddhism, he found it. He announced he was giving up his singing career to become a Muslim. To prove it, he changed his name to Yusuf Islam. Now, what to many pop stars would merely be a flash in the pan, to Yusuf Islam has been an enduring truth. For the past seven years, he's devoted much of his life to the study of the Quran and Islam, and he spends a lot of time working with a school and Islamic study centre in London. Yusuf Islam, it's become rather a, a cliché of the gossip columns that the, the glamour and the razzmatazz of the pop superstar's life is actually hell if you're living it. Is that the way you found it? Um, well, music, uh, the music business is, uh, yes, it's connected uh, quite a lot with hell, I should think, but uh, I wouldn't say it's all like that, though. Of course, there is a good side to it, uh, providing you, you can see it for what it is. As a child, um, at least one member of your family was Greek Orthodox. Were you drawn to any particular religion? Uh, of course, I received a uh, basic Christian upbringing. Um, I didn't really question that because, of course, uh, you take it for granted that your parents know better than you. But uh, anyway, as I grew up in that uh, atmosphere, there, there did seem to be a, a sort of a dichotomy or separation between what seemed to be the spiritual uh, ideal, you know, and uh, the actual material life that goes on uh, around me. So I suppose because of the attraction of the, the life of the world and because uh, the religious life seemed kind of difficult and uh, not quite for me, so uh, I went naturally into um, the life of the world. I was brought up in the West End of London, so I think that had something to do with me going into show business. But in, in those years, in the late 60s, it seemed that scarcely a week went by without some pop star or other uh, heading for the hills in India or Nepal to, to sit at the feet of a, a guru. Were you ever tempted to take that path? Yes, in fact, uh, that was part of my journey, I would say, that, um, you know, during uh, that time, um, I think I'd just had uh, a sort of brief career in the beginning with uh, my early songs and things. Uh, and then... I had contracted uh, tuberculosis. That was around, let me see, 1969, something like that, 1968, 69. Um, that made me think more seriously about life. Um, I started studying meditation. In a way, I'd lost my faith uh, in Christianity, I suppose, because I felt that uh, it was too linked with the system, you know, and we wanted to break away from the system. Um, I believed in God, but not through any particular dogma or, you know, um, uh, doctrine. Could I just ask you before you go on, what do you mean linked with the system when you were talking about Christianity? Well, um, it seemed to me that uh, the Christian faith was, uh, so there was a kind of a hierarchy <laughs> you know, um, built in with it. And I think uh, I, I wanted something more natural. Um, 
perhaps more spiritual. I didn't find it in the church. When you when you were, were struck down with, with TB and it took you a year's convalescence to get over that, did you at any time feel that this was a sort of uh, divine retribution uh, for your, your evil life? I mean, the, the headlines about Cat Stevens up until then had been Cat Stevens, the man with the, with the fast ladies and fast cars. Uh, did you feel that, that God was somehow telling you something when you la led you down with, with TB? Not really. I think it was more of a natural consequence. <laughs> I thought that it, it was nature working its way out. But of course, there was also the other thought that uh, I have to actually um, somehow find out what this nature is and what it wants from me. And of course, as I said, I still believed deeply in God, but I didn't know exactly how to connect or what exactly God wanted from me. And you, during this, this, this time of, of spiritual quest, you tried a, a number of things, didn't you? I mean, it wasn't, you didn't immediately come to, to Islam. You tried a number of things on the way, as it were. Yes, as I say, uh, I tried meditation. I mean, I, I, uh, I was a vegetarian. Uh, I believed, of course, along with many of my generation, uh, in peace love um, but the practical way of achieving that I, I had no idea um, I'd also become interested in um, Zen uh, also in astrology at one time I was you know uh, also uh, looking at the stars for guidance uh, you know you go through all these phases phases um, ultimately um, I wasn't sure, I didn't think there was any particular religion which seemed to have the universal uh, answer. The meaning that would be uh, for me and for everyone else at the same time. Uh, I didn't think there was such a faith. I thought perhaps I'd have to make up um, my, my own religion, if you like. Well, can you tell us how, how your revelation your conversion to Islam, the moment that you knew that, that Islam was the way forward for you, how did that happen? Well, it was actually, it was rather late. I was um, about 27 at that time. Uh, and I tried, as I said, all these other ways. I'd been uh, searching, but w without finding actually the peace that I was looking for. Then uh, I was given a copy of the Quran, um, and that's really uh, how I began to uh, embrace Islam. It was, in fact, uh, a gift from my elder brother, David. And um, when I started to read the Quran, uh, it struck me that this was like no other book I'd ever come across. The words uh, seem to be uh, um, so straightforward and speaking with such authority. It didn't seem as if any human being uh, had written this book. Was there one sentence in the Quran that unlocked the secret for you? Well, I think if you take the Quran as a whole, it couldn't just have happened like that with one sentence, but it was a gradual awakening to the fact that there was nothing wrong with this book. I mean, the more I read it, the more I realized there was no contradiction, whereas all other books I knew had to have something wrong with them, they were written by a human being, they had to. But there was something about this book that uh, didn't show any signs of imperfection. And the most striking thing, I would say, the thing that grasped me the most, uh, was the testimony in the Quran, the constant testimony, to the fact that there is only one God. And that, to me, gave me the message I was looking for, because up until that point, I thought that religion is a, a personal business, something which, well, you choose that way, I'll choose this way, I personally think I'm right, but... In fact, this was something which I felt was, had to be accepted by everyone, because everyone by, by nature believes in some higher power.
some controlling force. Um, many names are given, but uh, essentially uh, it comes down to this, that there has to be only one for all. And that naturally led to, to uh, changing my whole view of life. Um, for instance, it naturally brings you to understand that people are uh, equal because we're all created by the same God and that uh, we're all servants of the same Lord. So that gives you a kind of a feeling that there is unity, purpose, bond uh, between human beings. And that's what I found were, was the most impressive uh, aspect of the Quran. When you began to read the Quran, did you find there were certain passages which you took to be to be signposts on this path you were following? Yes, I think if I can read you a very small chapter first. This is in fact called um, the chapter of unity. And it's said to be equal to one third of the Quran because again, the subject is unity. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله السمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد Translation of that In the name of God, the gracious, most merciful Say, He is Allah, the one Allah, the sole Lord of all. He neither bears children, nor was he ever born. And like him, there is no one. I think this gives you the um, uh, effect to understand uh, that oneness of God means oneness of purpose for us and for the universe. So, so when you... When you came into contact with this oneness of purpose, having, having read and accepted the Quran, did you feel that you just had to cut yourself off from the life you had led before? I mean, could, you, could you have carried on singing, for example, or did you have to put that behind you? Well, you see, um, it wasn't necessary for me to cut myself off uh, as such. And in fact, I didn't, because um, I kept on making music, I kept on uh, singing, uh, I was on the road, but yet I was still a Muslim. Uh, what happened was, I think, when I finally did embrace Islam, uh, officially, if you like, unquote, then I had to begin uh, to do certain things. One of them is, of course, most important, is the prayer, is that you pray uh, five times a day. And this, in a way, had uh, an incredible effect on my life. Uh, because your relationship with God, the closeness that you feel, uh, has to begin with prayer. How else do we communicate uh, with God? So that starts to develop your God consciousness. Um, after that, you find that, of course, you can't do the same things you used to do because you know that uh, God has uh, made it clear for you that this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't do. So you start to uh, uh, make a way in your life and you start to go away from those things which are dangerous. For instance, uh, singing on stage. Uh, it's obvious that uh, Music isn't uh, forbidden as such in Islam, but showing off is, because again, it contradicts uh, your belief that there is only one uh, to be worshipped. So therefore, any idea that would lead to some kind of human worship or idolization is bad. Therefore, being on a stage, having spotlights, and even this uh, situation uh, is slightly more innocent, but uh, you've got to be very careful. So I withdrew from public performances and I just continued to make records. But again, after a while, uh, I lost my interest in music as well. 
to a large degree. So I was more interested in, um, you know, studying Islam, and uh, and that's what I did. It's a very formal code, isn't it? A very strict code in the Quran. Um, does it? Do you find it, it shackles you, in a way? It lays down so clearly how you must lead your life. It does seem to cut out a lot of human free will. Well, I, actually, I, I would say it's, it's the opposite, because what I would say is people that go around, number one, saying that they're free, they've got free will. Well, yes, we do have free will, to a certain extent. And... Yes, they are free, free to go on making mistakes. But if you choose to follow God's way, this is your choice. It doesn't mean that you're giving up your free will. It means that you're uh, submitting your will to God's will. And that really, I think, is something to do with controlling um, yourself as well. This helps you to know where you're going. Otherwise, you know that so many people are lost because they're, they're all completely free. They're, they're, they've got no rules. But another thing, um, I would say that um, it's not so much, uh, let's say, it's a restricted way of life. Actually, the, the basic rule in Islam, which I don't think many people know, is that everything is allowed except those things which are forbidden. And that's a completely different way of looking at it. And that is, in fact, the way it is in Islam. For instance, um, if you're talking about food, all food is uh, permitted, except for, we say, pork or dead meat, meat which has died uh, by itself, naturally, um, and so on. So if you look at it, it's the other way around. Uh, we're free to do anything, so long as it doesn't go against some of the uh, commandments uh, that we know. How did your, your colleagues, the people you were working with, people in the music business at the time, react when you, when you embraced Islam um, as passionately as you have? I mean, did you find that they were sceptical, that they said, oh, he's another, another pop star, you know, who's found his instant karma? Uh, I think a lot of my friends in the beginning, you see, as I was studying the Quran before, my acceptance, um, I was withdrawing from the social circuit, if you like. Because anyway, I, I didn't like the social circuit. I never liked parties. I never liked, you know, receptions. I always had to be <coughs> rather drunk to, you know, <laughs> to, uh, to go on with them. But um, yes, I was withdrawing. And my friends, I think a lot of them thought I was acting rather strange. You know, here was I carrying this book with me everywhere and uh, going into my room and reading and but uh, of course you've got to also realize that a lot of my friends have been with me for a long time they know also my lyrics my character and they knew I was searching perhaps they did think oh this is just a passing phase you know this is just something which is uh, he's going through if it's 1971 it must be his love yes yeah <laughs> so but that, of course, uh, has been proved wrong because no one really enters Islam uh, to leave it. It's, there's, there's no wish to go anywhere else. Have any of your, your friends from those days actually followed you into the world of Islam? Yes, I mean, uh, I still have very good relations with, uh, you know, my friends from uh, my previous career. Um, and uh, I still have business associates, for instance, accountants and such. Um, but I wouldn't say that they've embraced Islam as I have, but they've come to understand the message of Islam, which I think is very important. I think the first stage, if you're not searching uh, desperately for a way of life, you first of all uh, must look at things in their perspective. And a lot of people, I think, have been misjudging Islam because of the, the way it's been presented, and usually by, of course, non-Muslims. Uh, perhaps not um, misjudging. I think a lot of people are perhaps frightened of the revelation of Islam because they see in the revelation of Islam the Ayatollah, 
they see the face of the Ayatollah. Mm. And, and they're terrified of what he's doing, the Ayatollah and his holy war. Mm. Well, as I often say, I mean, if you're going to take uh, this aspect or this view of Islam, you've got to remember that this is one particular event which is happening in history to a certain section of the Muslim community, which uh, would only total, I would say, 4%. And you're judging Islam itself by this view of 4%. Uh, it's not really equatable with Islam. Although I don't, uh, I don't uh, say everything that uh, uh, Imam Khomeini is doing is uh, absolutely right. I wouldn't say that he's uh, doing uh, so many bad things. I say that uh, you have to look at it in balance to what there was before. The reaction of coming from an oppressive regime such as the Shah has its effect. But then again, uh, I wouldn't agree, as, as I say, with everything. And for that, we can say that we don't have to. Because in Islam, you have the word of God, which is for all people. It's not particular to any time or space. So therefore, whatever anyone does in the name of Islam has to be judged by the Quran and by the revelation of God, and that is, is just, and nobody can dispute that. And yet people hearing you talk now, and whilst they will undoubtedly be able to see the, the peace and calmness that you've achieved uh, through Islam, might find it hard to equate the, the, the lyrics of peace uh, that you once wrote about on, on, on your road, on your quest. And the, for example, the system of, of Islamic justice, which is, again, uh, something else which has made headlines in recent months, which seems so brutal. I mean, do you support that sort of level of brutality that we hear about associated with Islamic justice? What do you mean? Amputation for thieves, for example. Well, I'll give you a example about this uh, if you go to Saudi Arabia and I've traveled uh, to Saudi Arabia where there is the Islamic law you will you very rarely find anyone with only one hand what you will find and what I've seen with my own eyes people leaving when the time for prayer comes people leave in their shops wide open just put in a little sheet on top going to prayer coming back and everything being in its place people leaving bags in the middle of the street and this is what in a way people are judging people are saying oh it's a, such a harsh uh, punishment but what is the effect what does it do it actually protects if you like the innocent and it punishes the guilty whereas what we find in this society is it protects the guilty and it punishes the innocent and that's the balance that you know if we make up laws ourselves we're bound to make mistakes. But God doesn't make mistakes. When he decrees something, it's good for the majority. But that's the way we have to view it. I think that's, that's very important. You certainly seem to have embraced the faith more passionately than even than people who were born Muslims. But does that indicate that you feel you've got a, a sort of divine mission? Well, every one of us has a divine mission. Every human being has been created to worship and serve God um, and so in a way I mean I may be fulfilling my mission a little bit more than uh, someone else let's say but uh, in the concept uh, as we see it in Islam that all people are servants of God whether they're obeying or disobeying couldn't you have done more though I mean couldn't you have spread the message more widely if you'd adhered to your faith of Islam uh, but spread the message using the talents of, of music and lyric writing and performance uh, of Cat Stevens. Um, again, you come to the point of how do you follow Islam? Do you follow it your way or do you follow it the way that it should be followed? Does a person come to a religion uh, to suit himself or must he change himself to the religion? And as I believe that Islam is not just a religion concocted. It is actually the nature, the best nature, the best uh, code of life for any human being. Then it means that you must change your way of life to that. 
in order to achieve what you want. So if there is music in Islam, it will come after I've learnt what Islam is more than just coming up in the beginning and say, ha-ha, I know what Islam is, this is what it is, everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon. It has, there's no benefit in that kind of uh, propagation. People come to Islam only for sincere reasons and not uh, for any, uh, any other reason. Yusuf Islam, thank you very much indeed.